Odd, be careful with that dog. Odd, odd! Welcome to the Nah Void. Void, Void, Void. Oh, boy. Well, it's about time to put out this video that in no way, shape, or form can live up to the hype that it's generated. Gotta say, I'm surprised so many of you remember Code Lyoko. Well, hopefully this does better than my anime reviews, because hoo, 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 boy, they are terrible. Um, before I get started, let's do a quick summary of what Code Lyoko is for the few that don't know. Code Lyoko is a French animated cartoon series that used to air on Cartoon Network back when Maguzi was still a thing. Much like Avatar, this is one of the few non-Japanese shows to be considered almost anime. Minus the massive spirit bomb sized foreheads. It was a show that had 22 minute episodes and the plot was split between two worlds. The real world and the digital world with the second being completely in CGI. During its run, it was ranked as the number three best show on Cartoon Network, as well as winning a few French animation awards. It's had live show specials in Spain, a toy line, three video games, a canceled MMO, and a game show, and to this day, people still hold the show in high regards, and the series technically ran from 2003 to 2007. So, let's quit trying to sound all smart and knowledgeable, Cap, you nerd, and let's start the video. Oh, and since it was a French cartoon, they had no issue of showing the girls in their underwear. Why am I pointing this out? Well, I figured that if I didn't mention Yumi's red panties in this review, a certain special someone in the comments would probably get mad at me, so there you go. Actually, I'm surprised Cartoon Network let this through back then. I remember seeing it as a kid and laughing for a few seconds because I was an immature brat that thought underwear was funny, but sadly I haven't changed one bit. <laughs> oh god, I'm hopeless. So, the main plot of Code Lyoko revolves around five foreheads, uh, five kids, Yumi, Odd, Ulrich, Jeremy, and Amy Rose lover, Aelita. That last part was a joke, but I love her boots. Not gay! Together, they fight against an evil, sentient computer program named Xana. Or Xana, if you're an idiot. Xana is incredibly powerful to say he's just a bunch of ones and zeros. In season one alone, he showed the power to control all forms of technology, control organic life like rats and bees, limited cloning of characters like Yumi that he was able to send into the real world. He controlled inanimate objects like the samurai armor and vehicles, as well as a bus and construction vehicles. And he did stuff like crack, and he also did stuff like crack buildings and spread toxic gas through the air and induce comas through shitty pop music. Insert crappy pop idol of your choice here. Now don't you dare mess up my premiere! Do you understand me? So while dealing with Xana trying to kill them in the real world, the main characters also have to enter the digital world of Lyoko to fight him there. In this CGI world, the Lyoko warriors have to fight Xana's creatures as they look for giant towers to shut down that oddly resemble cigarettes for some reason. If they manage to find the needed tower, they can stop Xana from attacking the real world. For a while. As well as reverse time to before Xana attacked them that day. Effectively wiping the memory of everyone except them. Which is good, because the kids get into a lot of life-scarring danger, such as... Hey, what's wrong with your dog? <laughs> so yeah, memory wipe good. There is a limit to this, though. They can only go about two days into the past, and most importantly, returning to the past does not undo death. Death is final. There is a story downside to this plot device though. For whatever reason, the writers like to use this to set up interesting character development moments only to erase them minutes later. The most annoying being them turning semi-antagonist Jim into a trusted ally and hero only to undo that later in the next episode. It's a great change for Jim, but technically not canon according to the story. This happens a lot with Sissy too, who we'll get into in a moment, and while it's not a deal breaker, it has left old Code Lyoko fans feeling that the mini character developments are a little pointless. 
Another strange example is how Yumi and Ulrich's relationship developments don't always carry over after the return to the past is initiated. Yeah, despite them being immune, it's a little annoying. Anyway, that's the plot. Kids versus Xana. With a bit of romantic shipping and French panty shots thrown in for good measure. Oh, Alita's materialization. That's the other main plot of season one at least. The gang is also trying to find a way to bring Aelita out of the digital world and into the real world. Jeremy's quest to materialize Aelita is pretty cute at times. It takes a lot of episodes to get there, but mm, still. Dude is dedicated to saving his virtual crush. And that's the whole plot. <laughs> I'm too young and objectionably attractive to die! Damn! F the ruler. I need a protractor up in here. The hell is the circumference of your forehead, girl? When talking about the characters of Code Lyoko, you can't help but mention their HUGE FREAKING FOREHEADS! I mean, the hairline is non-existent, but moving on. Hashtag forehead forever! The cast of characters here is one of everyone's favorite parts of the show aside from the Lyoko battles, so let's go one by one. Aelita, do you read me? Yes, Jeremy, hi. All alone? Where are the others? They're out playing soccer. But I was feeling tired. Tired? That's interesting. Jeremy, how do humans know when they feel tired? Well, you feel like you don't have any energy, like having weak batteries, and so we rest a while. And is resting something you like doing? I used to find it really boring, but ever since I met you, Aelita, it's such a pleasure hanging out together. It is for me too, Jeremy. Jeremy, the kid with the plan. Very intelligent, so his massive thinking tank is justified. Back in the prequel episodes, it's learned that Jeremy is the first one to discover Lyoko and Aelita and the supercomputer. He's the smart nerd character, but he does manage to get his cool guy moments in. You know, between chatting with the girl of his computer dreams, Aelita. He's the one that figures out all of the tech stuff for the group. Now, sometimes his devotion to Aelita can cause him to hesitate on important life and death decisions. And the group usually has to talk him out of it, or Aelita herself has to make the executive decision to ignore Jeremy's command, even if that means sacrificing herself, which she has indeed done willingly. So, despite being smart, he isn't perfect. But he's a good guy. Also, he's the only character on the team that doesn't fight in Lyoko. Don't quote me on that. I didn't Google it, nor did I watch all 90 episodes. I'm sorry. I was low on time. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. <laughs> What about your dad? Where is he? Uh, staying with a friend from work. And what was it your parents argued about, huh? I have no idea. My mother tried to tell me, but I, I didn't understand, and I, I'm not sure she did either. Yeah, those arguments are the worst. I'm really glad that you came. Thanks, Ulrich. You know how to cheer someone up. Uh. Hmm. Ulrich is the sort of cool guy for the group. Described as an introvert, he's the more focused member of the team. He's got a thing for Yumi and he struggles with it a lot, mm, for the entire show in fact, and it only gets worse when William shows up. When in Code Lyoko, he takes on the form of a false samurai. You know, because he only has one sword. What, you're looking at me like, what's the point of mentioning that? But I'm telling you, if I don't point that fact out, somebody's gonna ask me why didn't I? <laughs> I gotta preempt this stuff, all right? <laughs> preempt, preempt. I can't pronounce anything. Ah, oh, with the public school. Also, beforehand, I forget. I find it so hilarious that Sissy is obsessed with getting Ulrich to date her. You know, despite him constantly crapping on her to her face in front of other people. Ulrich is a good character. Brave, dependable, nicer than his angry facial structure lets on. I just wish he and Yumi's relationship wasn't so... rocky. Mm, being a teen is more difficult than people let on. Shit, I do not miss those days. And speaking of Yumi... Yeah. No. Hey, I thought it was time out. Oh, guess I forgot. I will never understand why this girl is so tall. Everybody's short next to her. Girl would make a good basketball player. Yumi is an interesting character. Her choice of wearing all black clothing suggests that she has gothic tendencies to a small degree. But the minute she speaks, you're like, oh, this girl's pretty all right. The black is deceptive, man. Yumi is pretty pleasant. 
Sure, she has her moments of anger, like when her parents were fighting. That was really taking a toll on her. But, well, her parent, her parents were fighting. That stuff's rough. Regardless, this girl has your back when tough times hit. On multiple occasions, she's rushed through the dark of night to save her friends and even her enemies like Sissy. The only real problem I have with Yumi is that she gets her ass kicked a lot in season one to the point where it becomes a joke. In all honesty, Odd is actually a much more dependable fighter on the battlefield in Lyoko. And he's literally a cat that shoots arrows. Every single time she uses that slow as hell telekinesis, she manages to drop a single rock on a single enemy before getting bodied off screen by another enemy. Well done. Be kind to Yumi, people. I do find it a little odd that this girl has the same forehead size of all of her friends. Oh well. Speaking of odd... Oh, what a segue! Woo! Uh, 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 I'm so glad you're so bad. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, Odd, if you don't mind, I'm trying to study. Yeah! Odd completely lives up to his totally real name. From his odd hairstyle, to his odd doggy kiwi, to his oddly two-sided pants. Odd is the sort of comic relief for the group. He's also the one that's most prone to talking too fast. He's the clown. Most of the jokes in this show revolve around him, but usually those jokes are small and quick, and it's rare when he tries too hard to be funny. Barely happens. But at the same time, not many of his jokes land well. Still, he's a good character. In Lyoko, he's one of the most dependable fighters. Dude gets work done and with a limited arrow supply too. He's working with a handicap. Take notes, Yumi. Combined with his random future sight ability too, he's got a great move set for a guy dressed as an anime kitty. The treasured innocent member of the group and the center of the plot. Aelita is a sweet and super smart girl with pink anime hair. Girls got a good forehead on their shoulders, uh, head on their shoulders, whatever. Anyway, there's not a lot I can say about her after she gets her human form, besides it being a little weird hearing her older voice coming out of a much younger body. I stopped at season one because I really needed to get this video out, people were waiting and stuff. Now, what I can say about Alita, she's a pleasant character. The scenes where she's just chatting with Jeremy through the computer screen are all really cute. Despite not being a physical fighter, she manages to get the upper hand on a lot of monsters just by using the environment to her advantage. She's also freaking good with acrobatics. She's the calm and supportive character, and despite her always needing to be protected, I don't feel it's right to call her a damsel in distress archetype like, say, Princess Peach because Aelita does pull her weight when she can. See, a good character doesn't need to be overpowered. They just need to be effective. You know, be a part of the plot. Have some good moments. There's a legit reason as to why so many people crap on Tintin from Naruto. Just saying. I'm off topic, but you get the idea. Now, the last character that I'll go in depth on is Sissy. And it's gonna be real quick. 
I'll mention some stuff about Jim too if it hits me though. So this is Sissy. Well, well, nice little hiding place. What are you doing here? I should ask you that. I want to know: Are Jeremy and I waiting for you, or is this your own private love nest? Sissy, that is none of your business. Grow <laughs> up. Go on, laugh while you want. Show your friends how clever you are. But I see the way you look at me when they're not around. <laughs> on and off again, antagonist of the Lyoko Warriors. She often stands in their way. I want to say she's not the stereotypical one-dimensional bully character, but she does have quite a few stereotypical bully mean girl tendencies. That was a mouthful. Sometimes she's an unrelenting stuck-up jerk with a massive forehead. Seriously, look at that thing! It's bigger than Yumi's! Like, what the hell is going on with the cranium, girl? Other times, she can be caring and understanding, as well as scared and confused. One time, she led a school rebellion just to get everyone's phones back. And another time, she fought to get her lackey into Odd's band just because he was a good drummer and he wanted to be in the band. It was an actual selfless act. I really thought she had some dark, uh, arteria motive behind it. Off script. <laughs> Sissy flips back and forth between these two sides of herself so much that it makes her both inconsistent, yet interesting at the same time. There's a lot of interesting character development she goes through. A large part of this flip-flopping is due to the return to the past mechanic. Every single time that Sissy grows as a character, the show erases all of that progress and reverts her back to a one-dimensional lady douchebag. And yes, I understand that if the character development stayed, uh, the main characters would be out of a temporary villain. I understand, but I mean, eh, it's still annoying. I don't know what else to tell you. At the same time, she has her funny moments too. I gotta say, the flip-flopping would have annoyed me to no end if I was the writer. And you know what? The same thing can be said for Jim. I don't even need to go into depth. Check out the last two episodes of season one to see how they ruined Jim's heel turn. It's just... It, it, it's a real shame, man. Most of the main locations in the real world are actually based off of real places in our world. And as much as I rag on the foreheads, I have to admit that the massive foreheads are part of what makes Code Lyoko's art style special. Let's face it, very few characters look exactly like the Code Lyoko cast. There are a lot of anime characters that resemble each other, but Code Lyoko does not have this problem, I can assure you. All in all, it helps the show stick out. Due to the low budget of the first season, you'll often see repeated scenes like this one of Yumi. It was used twice in two different episodes in the same exact way. And sometimes you'll notice that the kids in the background aren't always moving or even blinking. It's creepy in a way. And then episode 14 has three crotch butt screen transitions for some reason. <laughs> then there's these little weird editing errors like this one. With the dog barking and the school falling apart. I can't work in my room. See ya. I hope he finds the right solution before Xana attacks again. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I didn't edit that in. Yeah, that's the actual final product. So yeah, they definitely had a few budget issues, but that didn't hold them back too far at least. As for the world of Lyoko, it's actually not bad for early CGI tech. Most of the environments are a little too spacious and empty, but they are all uniquely different and they do give off a video game feel, complete with health bars. The animation in the CGI world can be a little slow and stiff at times, again early technology, but I completely forgive it because I did wanted before wanted did wanted. Jeremy, I'm coming! No, I'm You're crazy. Awesome! The characters look good in CGI form. They all have some pretty cool powers, well, except for that slow telekinesis thing. But the single best part of the CGI world is when Aelita dives through towers. I swear, it's one of the coolest and relaxing scenes ever. From the music to the visual flair, it's easily one of my favorite parts of the show.
Now, one thing that a lot of fans seem to agree on is that season one of Code Lyoko, it has a bit of a pacing issue. On one hand, I admire the show for not being afraid to take its time. It is in no rush to get its plot going. On the other hand, because of that, the first season tends to drag on for a lot of people. For me personally, it started to drag around episode 13. It was still engaging, but you really felt like the team wasn't accomplishing anything. Ulrich and Yumi's relationship was going nowhere, so if you were into the shipping, you were probably suffering there. Stopping Xana isn't even possible until they get Aelita out, so that plot point just sits and stays. And getting Aelita out of the computer so that the Jeremy ship can finally sail was also taking forever. It does drag, man. At the same time, the show is still good. I was surprised to see how well this show still holds up. It's been a decade plus, people, and Code Lyoko is still a good watch. Have you any idea how hard that is to pull off? There's quite a few shows from my childhood that I cannot go back and watch. And there's definitely a lot of shows currently that I don't think a lot of people would go back and watch. Yay! Yumi finally did a good! <laughs> also, the opening theme is freaking awesome. I never get tired of hearing it. So, before I get to my wrap-up and final thoughts, and give this show a score, I'm bringing in a guest to give a second opinion on Code Lyoko, cause I can! Richard Cora Kenobi. I'm tagging you in, man. Hit it! Thank you, Cap. Hello, everyone. I'm the black-haired Richard Cora Kenobi, and I'm here to give you guys my very short 10-minute opinion on Code Lyoko. Uh, like you all, I am a huge fan of the show. I have, uh, loved and watched this show uh, since I was a kid. This show got me through elementary and early middle school, and it holds a special place in my heart as one of my favorite modern day animes. And since it is of a French production, um, it holds even more impact on me because my real last name is French. And I think that this is a great, uh, this was a great way for me to experience my culture. Now, I understand that in recent years, the show has been looked back on and there has been flaws in its very first season that if you were to watch today, you would undoubtedly say that you can't finish this show because it's just too repetitive and it reuses a lot of things and it does something that no other anime or cartoon show had ever done. It uses time travel to erase character development and revert the same characters back to the way they were except our main protagonist. And I agree, I was never a fan of that. One of my favorite side characters being Jim. Seeing how he was just a stereotypical gym coach who was hard on the kids, but he still did uh, want to protect them when situations got bad, and he even sacrificed himself on many occasions for them. And that's uh, very valuable, and that makes him an enduring character. And when we finally got to see him become a member of the group and uh, watch over the factory while Jeremy and the others were at school, I thought that was very nice. But it really tore my heart apart when we had to see him go back to being, um, well, the gym teacher. And I think that was a wasted opportunity. Same with Sissy. Now, while Sissy just started off being the annoying bitch character, she did, on some occasions, when she was on the verge of dying next to Auric for like the thousandth time, she did show that she was a good person, and she was uh, willing to uh, pretty much talk to people as just herself and not be the center of attention. And this is when the show could get good at its character writing, but then we would just forget about it. It wouldn't leave any social impact on us because we all knew this was going to be erased and they would just go back in time and Sissy would still be the same, but they would remember that she is a good person. 
and I thought that was wrong. I still do. No other show should do that. And don't even get me started on the foreheads, which Cap has made so many forehead jokes, so I might as well make one. Um, but all I gotta say is, it looks like someone pressed the wrong cheat codes, if you know what I mean. But, all jokes aside, I definitely think this show is a gem, and it's not just a product of its time. Some of it still holds up. One of my favorite episodes being where, well, we just see, um, Auric in danger of losing his secrets, uh, to Sissy about Lyoko, and we basically see, uh, Yumi trying to get his diary back, and I thought that that was very interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, it can just be looked at as a lazy episode, or nothing to just gloss over about, but for me, there's something there that I think some of you will pick up, or some of you won't. But my all-time favorite episode is when Aelita comes to the real world and she gets to spend time with Jeremy. They get to kiss, they get to have fun, they take a picture. But when she unfortunately has to go back, it's a heartbreaking moment. It really uh, tells you that these two do love each other and seeing her go back to Lyoko, it's not just Jeremy that's upset, it's also the viewer. And then it just ends with Jeremy's friends being there for him. That, ever since I saw that, that stuck with me. And it's still to this day one of the best episodes I've ever seen from the show, in my opinion. Let's be honest, who doesn't remember the third season? Some of you don't, some of us do. But the fourth season was where I think I agree with my friend Cap. The show just had to take so many new directions, and all of that started when they brought in William before, and William was just there for the sake of being there. He was a, a, a Sasuke clone. He was just there to be an antagonist and, a love, and in a love triangle with Orc and Yumi, which I thought was wrong. And then they started treating him as the most OP badass uh, ever, even after the show had ended. And I thought that was wrong, and I hated this character with a passion. Let's ultimately talk about why I and many others still love this show to a higher degree than any other anime. Well, I think when it comes down to it, it's the interesting uh, creativity they've given us. It's pretty much like Sword Art Online before Sword Art Online meets The Matrix in a very interesting way. The 2D and 3D uh, animation switch up is a very interesting choice and it oftentimes looks like a video game and it actually had a video game. And they knew how to uh, make the enemy Zana very interesting. Zana was basically that type of villain that you would never get to see. He had a huge presence in the show. Whenever he would absorb or take control of anything that was going on in the real world, you basically uh, were scared because they were fighting an enemy that they never even saw. And when he was in, and when they went to Lyoko, the dangers and the stakes felt more high, especially with the tedious uh, return to the past by Aelita and Jeremy. And this show wasn't even afraid to be dark or kind of, um, I don't want to say brutal, but it wasn't afraid to take risks, showing underage stripping, yeah, there you go, and of course, gratuitous moments that are just freaky, and there was that one episode where Odd and uh, Yumi switched bodies, and Odd kissed Auric and Yumi's body, yeah, and of course, there was the famous Aelita's father, the direction that went in and the way we saw Aelita's backstory was brilliant, and I commend them for, for just improving upon what they had in the first season. And by the end of this, I think the show really did accomplish something. The music, of course, is amazing. The opening, you'll never forget. And it's a classic opening that I still have stuck in my head. But with all seriousness, I think the reason people still love this show is not just because of the characters, not because of the originality, not because of the music or the stakes, but I think people like this show because it's taking 
or it took risk that you would never see other shows do. But I think what will ultimately have this show be underrated and not have it be a classic Cartoon Network gem is that, well, let's be honest, it came out during the golden age when uh, cartoons were skyrocketing more than anime, and that's kind of a sad fact. Maybe that's why this show isn't as fondly remembered as um, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, or Yu-Gi-Oh! Because while those shows uh, were basically pioneers of the early 2000s of Cartoon Network anime, this show, it knew what it wanted to be, and it knew it could do whatever it wanted to, but it knew it could never reach that level of awesomeness than the others. So instead, it just chose the very familiar Marvel Spider-Man route, and that's why I love the characters. So, yes, at the end of the day, I will still support this show, even though it's not a perfect one. It has its flaws, but it also has a charm. It has a charm that I think if you look past it, it can suck you in and it can give you something good. And just overall, how the writing and how everything takes its slow time, then this is probably a skip for you. The pacing isn't for everybody. But if you are a fan, then please continue to just watch it and make your own creative opinions on why you love it. Maybe we can all find that one opinion that truly represents what this show is and what it will always be. But until then, let's just keep watching it. Let's just keep enjoying it. Thank you, Cap, for having me on. It was a pleasure, man. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, Cap, whatever you do, don't watch Coley Oak Evolution. No problem, dude, and thank you for being on. So, there's your second opinion, folks. As for me, well, it's time for my final thoughts. Could I have said that in a more greasy way? <laughs> Pompous, arrogant. Asshole! All in all, Code Lyoko is a one-of-a-kind show. One that didn't have any problem putting its main characters in dire and sometimes even dark situations. Like Richard said, it's not perfect, but what show is? There are a lot of times where the characters are speaking too fast for me. Maybe this is just a problem with the English dub? I know that shows like Speed Racer had the same trouble with matching the English lines to the Japanese synced mouths. But even beyond that, characters like Yumi, Odd, and Jeremy all have a similar issue where the voice actor seems to be having difficulty reading their lines. Like they had a bad take or two and that just got left in. I know I do that from time to time with these videos, but that's because I'm an amateur chump. Ha 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 Self-degradation. Odd and Jeremy are the worst at this, especially when it comes to emoting, but the other voice actors do a bit better. Mmm, well, except for sissies lackeys, but who really cares about knee shorts and nerd face here? I sure don't. Fuck em. I didn't mention William because I didn't have enough time to watch more than the first season, but I'm not a fan. Much like how most people hate the extra rugrat Kimmy, I think it's similar for William, for me at least. He's kind of just there to be a romantic rival for Ulrich. Other than that, he's kind of a douche. I'm dark and edgy and soulful and all that bull crap. I understand that he's a fan favorite and apparently the strongest member of the Lyoko Warriors, even though I think I remember someone telling me that Aelita turns out to be the strongest by the end of the series. I, I don't know. Either way, not a fan of William. I've already covered the pacing of the show being a little slow, and honestly, in today's world, with every show on the CN being 11 minutes long, I, I doubt people will feel like watching 22-minute shows anymore. Also, the facial design of the characters can sometimes have everyone looking like they have constant bad attitudes, but it doesn't always look that way, so, you know. All in all, I give Code Lyoko an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed looking back at these episodes. Slow pacing and all, they really held my attention. It's still a good show after all these years. The flaws are a lot more present now since, you know, I'm older. 
but that didn't hurt my enjoyment in any way, so I'm glad to give it this score. Sorry I couldn't cover the other seasons in depth, had to go off memory, but this video really needed to come out now. <laughs> in the future, I'll be a bit better with my video schedule planning and stuff. <laughs> I'll get organized, I swear. Seriously though, thanks for watching, those of you that did. Big thanks to Richard for being in this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Cap of the Navoid signing off. See ya! Is it okay if I study in your room? Sure. I can even give you some help if you want. I can sure use some.